The Sony 40mm f2.5 G lens has become my most used lens. Let me tell you why. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the Sony 40mm f2.5 G lens. Why I like it so much and why it's become my most used lens despite having much fancier and more expensive lenses. First and foremost, we have to talk about the size and weight of this lens. As you can see, it's really tiny, measuring only 1.8 inches tall and only weighing 6.1 ounces. Now the size and weight were definitely the first things that drew me to this lens and I think they're the main selling points. I also own the Sony 35mm G Master lens, but look at the size difference. Sometimes you just need a small, lightweight lens for everyday carry or street photography, and that's where this lens really shines. When I pair this lens with my Sony a7C, the setup is compact enough that it easily fits into Peak Design's smallest sling bag, the three liter, very easily with plenty of room to spare. And on top of that, it's also light enough that if I were to put a camera strap on, I could wear this thing around my neck all day without feeling uncomfortable. The build quality of this lens is exactly what you would expect from Sony G. It feels really well built, the materials are very high quality, and it's sealed from dust and moisture ingress. It has an AF-MF selector switch and a linear manual focus ring, which is really nice for shooting video. I also find that the dual linear focusing motors in this lens are fast, quiet, and super smooth. There's a customizable focus hold button, and it also has a declickable aperture ring. Right now, the clicks are enabled, and then you flip this switch, and it's nice and smooth. And I gotta say that Sony did an excellent job of dialing in the feel of this aperture ring. It's just the right amount of tension and resistance in here. So it's not so light that I worry about bumping it and accidentally changing my aperture settings, but it's also not so stiff that it's hard to move. It's just right. And to be completely honest, I find myself constantly just messing with this thing because it just is so satisfying to fidget with. So good job, Sony, on getting the feel of this ring just right. It's perfect. In general, I'm a big fan of using aperture rings on lenses as opposed to a dial on a camera body because I find it much faster and more intuitive to use. And on top of that, if you're a Sony a7C Mark I user, this lens will be a life changer because that means you'll have dedicated controls for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO on the camera, which was one of the main complaints for this camera body when it came out. This lens has a maximum aperture of f2.5 and a minimum of f22. It consists of a rounded seven bladed diaphragm and in my experience, it produces really pleasing bokeh. If you're the type that's going to pixel peep and really zoom in on your bokeh to analyze it, you may see some cat sighing or some onion ringing in the bokeh, but be sure to set your expectations accordingly. Remember, this is a $550 lens which prioritizes compactness. If obtaining the most beautiful, perfect bokeh is your top priority, this is probably not the lens for you. But in my personal opinion and in my experience, I have no issues with the bokeh that this lens produces. The lens also comes with a lens hood. Now I know a lot of people think it looks kind of goofy. I personally think it looks pretty cool and unique. Uh, one unique feature about this lens hood is that it actually has 49 millimeter filter threads on the hood itself. So if you wanted to, you could actually use this with a step-up ring and your larger filters if you wanted to, which you can't really do with traditional lens hoods. Uh, if you don't want to use the lens hood with your filters, there are 49 millimeter filter threads on the lens body itself. So um, that's really cool. And the best thing I think about this line of lenses uh, is that they all share the same filter thread size. So the 24, the 40, and the 50 all use the 49 millimeter filter thread size so you can share filters amongst all three lenses. 
If you've already seen my Like a Killer video, then you know that I like to rock this lens hood sometimes. I know it kills the compactness of the lens somewhat, but I think it looks really cool and I like using it. It comes with this nice lens cap as well. Um, I'll be sure to link that in the description down below if you guys wanna check it out. So I've been using this lens for about eight or nine months now, almost every single day. And I find the lens to be extremely sharp with little to no chromatic aberrations or fringing. Uh, I'll put some examples on the screen right now so you guys can check it out. So far, I've been talking about all the things that I like about this lens, but there are a few things that I don't like about this lens. One is focus breathing. So this lens does have a small amount of focus breathing. It's not as bad as something like my 35 millimeter G Master, but it is still there. Uh, fortunately for me, I shoot all of my video either on a Sony a7 IV, which has focus breathing compensation, or my Sony a7S III, which will have focus breathing compensation in March 2024. If you're a video shooter, then I think focus breathing compensation is a really good reason to buy Sony lenses over other third-party lenses. The next thing that I wish was better with this lens is the minimum focusing distance. The minimum focusing distance for this lens is listed at 9.8 inches. And I have found myself in scenarios where I wish I could get closer to the subject that I'm trying to photograph, especially something like product photography. Um, luckily, I mostly use this lens as a walking around, everyday carry type of lens, so I don't run into that scenario very often, but I do wish that that was better. The last thing that I find annoying with this lens is actually the lens hood that comes with it. Um, I know that it's unique and it has some unique features and it looks pretty cool, but the thing that drives me crazy is that you can't take it off flip it around and store it on the lens like you can with any other traditional lens hood. So if I ever wanna take it off and shoot without it, I have to shove it in my pocket or in my bag, which can get annoying. And that's really it for things that I don't like about this lens. Obviously, I could say things like, oh, I wish this was an F1.4 and I wish it had 11 rounded aperture blades, but I'm trying to be realistic and I know that those things would add size and cost to the lens. Overall, I think Sony hit it out of the park with this lens. I think they found the perfect balance between compactness, price, and performance. And that's why this has become my most used lens. Now, don't confuse most used lens with my favorite lens because I think that title belongs to my Sony 35 millimeter G Master, but because this is such a versatile, small, lightweight lens that has really good performance still, that's why I carry this thing around with me almost every single day. Oh, and one more thing. I wasn't sure how much I would like the 40 millimeter focal length before I got this lens, but now that I've been shooting with it for months and months and months, it might be my new favorite focal length. I am not sure I'm ready to commit fully to that statement yet, but I will say though, that as a 35 millimeter fan, I think you guys will really, really like the 40 millimeter focal length. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you found the video useful. If this is your first time here, my name is Matt and I make videos about photography, video, gear, I do reviews, tutorials, all that good stuff. So if you don't wanna miss out on any future videos, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out a lot. Again, my name is Matt, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.